Picasso is cancelled. And before you say, oh, we shouldn't cancel people for making mistakes, no. Also, he's dead. You've probably heard of Picasso in one point of your lifetime. His art looks like this, 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 and this. Boy, do I have something to tell you today. I have done some research and I think it's time for me to make you aware so that we can all give a collective side eye to the institutions that continue to platform his work and talk about him with romantic imagery. Before you talk about separating the art from the artist, listen to what I have to say in this video. What's up, howdy, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rumbo, yay! And for those who don't know me already, I'm an artist and a fine art student in South Africa, and I make videos just about that. So if that interests you, you might wanna hit the subscribe button down below. Today's video is a little bit different. I felt the need to absolutely come for the throats of men whose imagery in the art industry remains untainted, even though they are literal criminals. <laughs> Picasso you're first because I fell down a rabbit hole of all the stunts that Picasso pulled whilst he was still alive and I need to tell you about everything it's bad it's like really bad but before we get on to this video make sure you like subscribe turn on my post notifications so you're notified when next upload a video I usually upload on Wednesdays and Saturdays um, but sometimes my schedule may shift depending on how what one in my life <laughs> so you want to make sure my notifications are turned on as you may or may not know it is my goal to reach a thousand subscribers my ultimate goal is to reach 5,000 by the end of this year and I a thousand percent am sure that we'll be able to do it with your help so if you haven't already please make sure to share this with two of your best friends please listen up friends when I tell you that this man makes a moldy pile of dog poop look like gold I'm not joking I'm going to be mentioning a lot of very tough topics in this video based on what he did so if the following are true triggering to you please feel free to sit out this video and join me in the next one but this video will be mentioning sexual assault misogyny child predation and grooming as well as abuse and abusive relationships rough transition into the video. <laughs> to get the admin out of the way, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about Pablo Picasso. Pablo Ruiz Picasso was a Spanish painter, sculptor, printmaker, ceramicist, and theater designer who spent most of his life in France. He also holds the title of having the most names given to one person. He is presumed to be the inventor of the Cubism movement alongside George Braque, was a painter inspired by his affairs and his lovers, which he called his muses. Okay, I'm done being respectful. Uh, let's get on to the real stuff. Yo mom, yeah? If I were to change the biography of Picasso on Google, it would be Picasso, a tyrant of woman. Two women. Think of every single crime you could inflict on a woman. I'm willing to bet he has allegedly done that. And this has been documented by multiple of the victims. And after reading all of this, like I refuse to sit here and allow his image to be remained untainted because his work is so revolutionary. I've actually seen a lot of commenters online defending with tooth and nail this man because of his work. Men like Picasso, an actual genius, are charismatic. Their energy and powerful personalities draw people. Often other powerful personalities to them. Men admire and like them. Women find them S-E-X-Y. That's how it is, human nature. Claire really getting them with this comment. Honestly, all the comments under this article were really spicy, so I'm gonna link it down below so you can see. Fernanda Olafier, Eva Goel, Olga Koklova, Marie-Therese Walter, Dora Ma, Françoise Gillot, and Jacqueline Roque. These were seven of the women in Picasso's life. This music. When you do a brief Google research, this is the extent you know about the woman. But context, context is what drives it. Home. Picasso was, in my opinion and in my own words, a misogynistic tyrant. In his own words, he viewed women as either goddesses or doormats. He said this to his one muse, Françoise Gillot, um, but he said that in 1943 and at the time he was 61 years old and she was a 21 year old student. Gillot also described him as someone who had a severe lack of empathy, who loved to exercise abusive power over women and seek thrill from it. And I find this quote a lot more alarming coming from someone who was in a relationship with someone who was 40 years her senior. I have to tell you when I was looking up these women's ages when they were in relationships with Picasso it was terrifying. Like for example Marie Therese Walter was 17 and Picasso was 45 when they met each other. That was she was a minor. Picasso also allegedly r-worded people on several occasions. He preyed on women basically and had them fearing for their lives and the word fear had come up in a quote from one of these women Woman. Another thing, um, Picasso had also used minors as nude models. And I'm not talking like 16, 17, 15, which is still really messed up, by the way. He 
used prepubescent girls, like literal elementary children, as nude models. And I refuse to see you try and defend that because paired with his other history, there is no excuse. That was just pure grooming and child predation. John Richardson, a noted Picasso biographer, was quoted to say, young girls excited Picasso. I literally had nothing more to say. He locked model Fernand Olofier in their studio because he refused to allow her to model for another sculptor. Obsessive, controlling, manipulative. He kidnapped a woman, Irene Legou. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her surname right. Sorry, I couldn't find a pronunciation online. He kidnapped Irene Legou because it was said that he had madly fallen in love with her. Is it just like, is it just me or don't you think that's obsessive stalker tendencies? I don't think we show our affection by kidnapping the people we have crush on, but that just might be me. He made the lives of women absolutely miserable. He exhausted his muses for the sake of art and left them like in the worst state. But in summary, he made the lives of women absolutely miserable. He exhausted them through and through just for the sake of his art. I'm not comfortable with that. Honestly, I believe that he's just a criminal with this magical comfort bubble of his legacy and art protecting him. So still he is praised. Is this surprising? No. But it still irks me that institutions continue to celebrate and romanticize his works while simultaneously, you know, invalidating and avoiding the severity of the crimes he pulled while he was still alive. In March 2018, the Tate was set to hold the first solo exhibition of Picasso. This show focused on his works that were produced in the year 1932, which is also marked the year of wonder for him. Um, and that was also non-coincidentally the year that he had at his affair with Marie Therese Walter. The show aimed to strip away common myths to reveal the man and the artist in his full complexity and richness, uh, but we're going to read an excerpt from the press release. 1932 was an extraordinary year for Picasso, even by his own standards. His paintings reached a new level of sensuality and he cemented his celebrity status as the most influential artist of early 20th century. In his personal life throughout 1932, Picasso kept a delicate balance between tending to his wife Olga Koklova and their 11-year-old son Paolo and his passionate love affair with Marie Therese Walter, 28 years his junior. The exhibition will bring these complex artistic and personal dynamics to life with an unprecedented range of loans from collections around the world. 1932 was a time of invention and reflection. Having recently turned 50, in collaboration with Christian Zervas, Picasso embarked on the first volume of what remains the most ambitious catalogue of an artist's work ever made. He was 50. She was 23. I found a bit of an issue with this press release, and whether the, the specific quote of the delicate balance he kept was satirical or not, it still kind of irked me. Regardless, I feel like the Tate glossed over the severity of the situation. Um, there was still some sort of like celebratory tone that I picked up on in describing Picasso, regardless of the aim to be critical and expose the truth behind the artist that they said they were going to do in the very same press release excerpt. But honestly, that's just me being wishful. I know there will never come a day that a major institution will release a two hour video essay absolutely bashing this icon in art like honestly be blasphemous at that point <laughs> but because of that it feels so performative i never went to the exhibition during that year so i honestly don't know much more besides the press release and the images i saw online so maybe there was something else that actually provided that exposing feel that they wanted to happen and but from what i saw online side eye side eye <laughs> so please feel free to disagree if you want to disagree with what my takeaway from the press release was everything should not be viewed in a vacuum in 2019 2020 they actually hosted a solo show for dora mar one of picasso's muses to showcase her work because she was an artist in her own right now that you've heard some of the accounts that i found on picasso the question lies should we ignore it or acknowledge it should we separate the art from the artist this is the debate of the century the debate of the millennia the debate of all time in art spaces this is such a heavy 
heavily debated topic, especially in recent years, given the cases such as Harvey Weinstein and the hashtag MeToo movement, R. Kelly, it can be a famous celebrity, musician, author, artist, it can be anyone who does something problematic. And then we question whether that should be acknowledged and they be cancelled or hey, their stuff is still great, I'm going to listen to it. I'm just going to say from the get-go that I believe that the answer to this topic is always going to be varied and it's going to be very personal to you. So you have to make that decision on yourself. I feel like there is no right or wrong absolute truth because it is such a nuanced conversation. But as it stands now, I personally believe that you can't separate the art from the artist. Separating art from the artist is fine and dandy when buying the art doesn't put money into the artist's pocket. To me, great art is great art. If I heard a song on the radio and don't know who it is and think, man, that's a great song. I'm not going to be thinking about the artist at all. If I later hear the person that wrote the song was a total POS, does that make the song less great? Cannot separate the art from the artist. In fact, that's what makes it art and not a mass-produced poster they sell at Target. In the case that people support that art can be separated from the artist, they mainly drive by the stance that anything the artist does on the side does not negate the fact that what they produce was good in the first place. We may be drawn to an artist purely for the art they make or the music they produce and not necessarily follow everything else that the artist supports or keeping up to tabs with what they say and do. Okay, he was a bad guy, but I'm listening to the song because it's about Bob because I agree with what he did back in the day. Do people still say Bob? I feel like I'm aging myself. They say that because your intentions are not bad or not to support what they did that was problematic then it's pretty okay because you're just listening or watching or consuming the media for the media's sake. Despite this sentiment, do you think it's significant where your intentions lie? The way I see it, choosing to separate the art from the artist still financially supports them and also provides lack of accountability because they'll see that they're still able to profit. If we look at Picasso, there is no way he can financially benefit from the situation because, well, uh, he's still dead. If we look at R. Kelly and if you decided to stream his music still, he would financially benefit. Well, I actually don't know because I, I honestly don't know where he is, what he doing or what's happening there. So really to answer this question, you need to look at who benefits in the situation and how they do benefit. The artist in some sort of way. Other people in the industry will see that regardless of what they do, they can get away with it and still profit. And it sends that message that they basically can do anything and not suffer any repercussions. And lastly, there are times when the artist or the problematic things the artist did are literally embedded in the art. Picasso, I mean, his muses were all abused, <laughs> allegedly. And that was for the sake of art. It was his inspiration. He used child nude models for his art and in that case it really is impossible to separate the art from the artist because you know it's like super embedded. Separating art from artist allows the artist to walk off scot-free. Shannon Lee, a writer, created this article and in it she said just because we can separate art from the artist doesn't mean we always should. It is too convenient for established men who have made their careers off of images of women to have their misogynist abuses brushed aside with that simple near canonized argument. I believe that trying to separate the art is like slapping a person on the wrist and putting money in their pocket. So in that case, Picasso, you are cancelled. Please feel free to let me know your thoughts on Picasso and the whole debate of separating art from the artist. I think this is a great topic to debate and uh, have a fight in the comments. And also, if you want me to expose any other artists here on these videos, I actually enjoyed researching this one. So feel free to let me know if there's anyone you want me to do an expose on and I'll do it in the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like. If you like me, subscribe. Comment down below. All that fun jazz and until then